Monaghan against Cavan, two neighbours. And like I was looking at the sort of the exposure to top opposition that both of these teams have had in the last few years. And if you look at Monaghan in 2023, they played Division One and finished sixth. Then they went to the championship and they played Tyrone and Derry and Derry again, Clare, Donegal, Kildare, Armagh, which they won on penalties, and then Dublin. So, like, that's a really strong list of teams that they played. Whereas last year, Cavan, they played in Division th- uh, Division 3. They finished second uh, in that division, but won the final. Then the championship, they played Armagh, ended up in the Talchon Cup, and they played Leash, London, Offaly, and Down. So, if you were to say what the teams did last year and how to prepare them for this year, it feels like Monaghan you know, they have an awful lot more kind of under their belts in that sense. But they did finish eighth in Division One, whereas uh, Cavan finished third in Division Two. So that might even it out a little bit. But certainly Monaghan will feel like they're far more road tested over the last couple of years. Yeah, they probably will. I, I have to say that I was I've been very I was very impressed with I haven't seen them in the flesh flesh, but very impressed looking from afar at, at what Ray Galligan did in his first year at Inter County this year. Um like uh, outside outside of uh Outside of the two dominant forces in Division Two, which are Armagh and Donegal, they were they were next best in a fairly cutthroat division. Um, they got some great results along the way. And were narrowly beaten in a couple of the games that they did lose as well. Um, and had plenty of plenty of talent. It's not you know it's not that many years ago that they, that they won the the Ulster title uh, under under Mickey Graham. And then you have a, 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 see Cavan are kind of Cavan have been steady the whole of through Division Two. Manhattan have had a tough Division One campaign. Won their first game, lost the next six, um, a couple of bad defeats in the middle of it. I thought towards the end of the league, they were kind of getting back to themselves a bit, um, particularly against Tyrone. I thought at different stages in that game, that was you know the man that that we that we know and and love as a you know watching them from as a spectator or whatever. Like McManus is going to be available to them. Jack McCarron will be available. You know, there's a couple other lads. And Andrew Woods. I don't think his. I don't. I don't see anything about his red card been appealed. So I'm assuming he's out for the weekend. And if a couple of other bits and pieces, Desi Ward pulled the hamstring against Mayo, and a couple of other knocks that they're carrying into it. Steve um, O'Hanlon and Michael Hamill. They need them fit. Yeah, like they they all lit it up in the first couple of rounds of the league, and then I've played very very little since. Um, and who was it that went off the last day? Michal Bannigan went off the last day as well. I believe he'd be available to play. There's a potential as well that Rory Began could play too. Um, it's, it's a big thing, isn't it? Because yeah. he's he only just came back last week, and obviously he's been away at American football, the international player pathway. And Vinnie Corey was asked a few days before his return, he was asked about, and he goes, we're happy with the enthusiasm and positivity that Darren McDonald has showed. Now, he played all seven games, even though there would be learning points in it for him. But he has bounced back and kept coming. As far as we're concerned, Darren is in there and it's his position at the minute. And as I said, this was before Began came back. Now, this is a sort of, a bit like Desi Farrell bringing in Cluxton. If you bring the guy back in, you're, you're going to play him. But what sort of message does this send out to Darren McDonald, who has played the entire league? And does it send reverberations through the panel or does it send Cam through the panel, knowing that you've got a money in the bank goalkeeper there? I'd say the latter, to be honest with you, and it's not as if like he he was he's been involved in the panel this year, um, and he's been in around the panel, and he's been training, and he's been part of the, you know, the not the match day squad, but he's been part of the you know excess squad, should we say, for some of the early games in particular before he before he went off to the states, um, and like Sherman and haven't known anything but Rory Began and goals for for the last decade, like I think I think he took part in a training camp over the weekend. Like I wouldn't be that surprised if he started. Been been honest with you, would it be harsh on McDonald? Yes, it it would be. But like when you talk about lads that have credit in the bank, like Rory Be- Began couldn't have any more credit in the bank than he does. I w- I wouldn't be that surprised if if he played. Um, no, Cluxton didn't come straight in when he came back last year. But like, yeah, the, the, I think the interview we'd probably all love to get is David with David O'Hanlon to get his what his mentality was when. Cluxton came back last year and he basically saw no game time for the rest of the year. He was back involved this year for the league, so he obviously took it pretty well, played a good bit of league time. I know Evan Comerford started the league final, but I think Finney Corey's going to try and do what's best to try and win the game at the weekend. And if that means um, if that means bringing a fella that's only technically back fully in the squad the last 10 days, then I, I still think he'll do it. But what happens then if he puts Began in now and then in another week or two, a contract is offered yeah. to him from an American football team. 
that's where this is a really difficult one because like if Began has thrown his hat in you know fully into this American football thing which I think is an unbelievable opportunity and thing to be able to do over the last few months there's no way he's going to say no if he gets offered a contract and then look maybe Corey can just have a conversation with Darren McDonald and say look he's my number one while he's here and if that means he's just back for a little while look you are the number two and your opportunity could come like that's going to be tough for McDonald to take if it happens but I suppose you know he can see it as well like I'm sure he would understand yeah um I'd say you, you would like and the thing about it is I'd say Began and co have a fair idea of what percentage chance there is of a call coming at this stage um I'd imagine they do I'd um I, I'd half question why him and Jackson are back in Ireland if there was a contract close to the table. Okay, um, may, maybe I'm a mile off on that, but I think I think you're far more likely to get a contract when you're when you're over there and there's the opportunity to impress or to go somewhere within half a day and trial or whatever it is. Now that's that's just that's just my own opinion uh, on it. Um, Charlie Smith obviously got those trials and that was you know the door was nearly ajar he just needed to kick, just go through it or whatever and impress during those trials but may, maybe i'm a mile off but i would i would say that maybe they're less likely to get a contract the fact that they're home now at the minute and likely to go and play games and potentially take part in games which could jeopardize a professional contract as well so that's just that's just my own kind of feelings on it well, I'm trying to figure out what exactly uh, this particular NFL player was doing, but there was a guy, there was a guy called Taylor Heineke, and he had left. He was um, I'm just looking up an article here on the what is it, the Washington Post, and he was he, he was obviously in line to be a quarterback and all this kind of stuff. He was out of college, things didn't happen. And I see a quote here that he was 27, sleeping on a couch every night, worn down from chasing a dream that didn't want to be caught. It tortured him to think that the NFL start he would only ever get was in a 2018 loss, loss where he had three interceptions and partially tore his tricep. I'm fairly sure he had gone work on a full-time job and then he got the call back in. So from what I can see, like you often have players who are working away on their own that they you know, have to take up other employment and then all of a sudden they get the call and opportunity comes and they have to drop everything and head along to a training camp or whatever it might be. It could be one of these things whereby... Look, the NFL season isn't going to start till I think it's September when it starts. And you just don't know when he'll get a call to come into the practice squad. Let's see how you go. Okay, he seems like a good fit. So I don't think it's as cut and dried as, as, as what you might be suggesting there. Yeah, I know. I, 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 fake news. I agree on that. Yeah, now, I, do, I, I don't think it's it's cut and dry. That's more, it's, it's more of a theory. And I do think, and as I said to you on, on Monday show, I do think if they're likely to take a punt, pun fully intended, that they will be taking a punt on someone that's in the cycle a few years or that they have like evidence of them playing and kicking in that pressurized scenario and you know actually playing in you know competitive games or whatever. I think they're less maybe less likely to take the punt on the Irish fella who's been playing a different sport for the last decade. The the Irish lad who's played in front of fifty thousand people and kicked pressure free, yeah. Ah, yes, I know he's kicked pressure free, channel. But I I know what you're saying, and I hope it happens. But it's you know they're, they're different codes, they're different games. Do you know pressure what I mean? Like pressure. Yeah, the pre the pressure is similar. Don't get don't get don't get me wrong. I'd say Rory Began would be probably you know given of what he's experienced, he would be better equipped with dealing with the pressure maybe as opposed to Mark Jackson. That's not to say that Jackson wouldn't um, deal with that well. It's just Began has been exposed to that, shall we say, like regularly with Manhattan down through the years and played in big All-Ireland semi-finals probably last year in front of, there was definitely 60,000 there anyway. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I'd, I'd love to see the two of them get contracts. I, I would just hazard a guess and say the fact that they're home and potentially playing championship football maybe makes it seem less likely than I thought it would be uh, a while ago. Uh, an interesting one for Kevin is, and I was reading a piece with Paul Fitzpatrick, a uh, journalist based up there, and he was talking about how Monaghan, or sorry, Kevin, I should say, finished third in Division 2 on seven points. Four years ago, 2020, they got relegated from Division 2 on six points. So in some ways, the fact that they finished third could be slightly misleading because they haven't won since round four on the 25th of February. So they're not exactly coming in and flying form here. Um, we're we're both the Donegal and the Armagh games 
uh, round four onwards. Am I wrong in saying? I'll I'll just double check that. Yeah, might the the campaign might have been stacked, shall we say, as in more difficult towards the towards the tail end. Sure, they were. Yeah, it's funny they were relegated. No, no, no I'm just, I'm just looking. I, I'll just read out the fixtures that they had. So they beat Kildare as everyone did in in the round one on the 27th of January. Then they lost by to, by a point to Donegal on the 4th of February. Then they beat Cork by a point. Then they lost by... Sorry, they beat Louth by a point. Then they drew a cabin. So since then, they were beaten heftily by Armagh, 15 points. And they lost by four points to Fermanagh. So it's only yeah. a couple of games. Yeah, it's only a couple of games. That would have been a disappointing one to lose to Fermanagh at the end. Fermanagh were after shipping a massive score, weren't they? The week before against Loud, um, but to be fair, you know any chance of qualifying or whatever was was done, and uh, they were safe at that stage. I just think they're they're a dangerous prospect, and like of of all the games where there's a potential for an upset, this is probably the most likely one. I would say. Yeah, 